Good morning everyone, we are at the Premier Hotel in East London. This is where uh, we spend the night because uh, we came late and it was one of the only ones with a, with a restaurant so we could eat something. It is drizzling outside. The plan for today is very simple. Find a place on the beach where it doesn't rain. So uh, we're shooting for St. Francis Bay, Jeffreys Bay or St. Francis Port, somewhere. It's about uh, three hours away. Theoretically, it shouldn't rain there, but uh, I'm not expecting much. Once again, this trip would not be possible without our sponsors, Motorrad Rentals in South Africa, Cardo Systems and BMW Motorrad Romania. Stick around until the end of the show to find out more. And keep your fingers crossed because uh, there's the ocean, it's beautiful, but it's rainy. I just, we just want some sun, that, that's it. Just some beautiful, warm, bathing, yellow, amazing sun. That's, that's it. Because we had arrived late at night in East London and didn't get to see anything, Daniel was in a very exploring kind of mood. We have just left the hotel and uh, it stopped drizzling. So we're exploring a little bit of East London. See what it's about. It's almost 11, 21 degrees, people already out swimming. This is life. Look at them being so happy here. Hopefully we'll end up in a place like this tonight with a lot of sun. That's what I want. Daniel is really in a exploring kind of mood today. He slept very well. Where's he going? He's going on top of a house. Why are we going on top of a house? Ish from Wasser. Waves are very big today. After taking a few photos, we carried on exploring. <laughs> Mini circle, that's what they call this little roundabout, first come, first served. <laughs> it's more fun in the side, man. It's more fun in the side. It's the same, the same, the same views. After thwarting Daniel's attempt to keep us off track, we managed to go in the correct direction because I really wanted to see some sunshine. That's the hotel where we stayed at, so we are going towards St. Francis Bay now. Hopefully keeping the coast, because it smells absolutely amazing. Ah, salt, ocean, smells like an oyster. Or does an oyster smell like the ocean? I don't know. Last night I came from that side, and all of these little street poles here were lit up. Christmas decoration, Christmas lights, all of this little kiddie playground was lit up. There were children everywhere. So it was at about 8 o'clock at night while it was drizzling down. So uh, everybody was having a great time. This is a very big city, East London. Take a look on a map there, it's huge. After about 20 minutes of riding, the drizzling rain let up with a bit of sun even peeking out. This of course immediately made Daniel get off the pre-discussed route in search of more adventure. Where is he going? He says he slept very well last night and he feels completely refreshed now and uh, he's in a mood to explore like a little child, which is good, but this isn't taking him anywhere. Fun. This isn't very good content, is it? Nothing's happening. He's always going back. Our road is supposed to go that way. Now he's going back. You would have noticed that um, our other friend George hasn't been with us for quite a while now. When you're doing longer trips on a bike, especially a very long one like this one, a month long, that's huge. You're stuck with the same three guys in, uh, in our case, you know, almost 
every hour of the day. So um, you have to set some rules before you start. And one of them that we decided on even before we left is a very simple one. We try to be as um, malleable, that's a word, as, uh, as possible as a group. But at the end of the day, you do whatever you want to do. What does he see now? I tell you, he spots the weirdest things. Um, you do what you want to do because it is your trip. So George decided the, the plan we had, Daniel and I, wasn't to his liking and he wanted to see other things, which was great. So he's been riding on his own for uh, about a week, a week and a, and a half now, since we left Pretoria basically, or since I left Pretoria. They went up to, to Kruger Park together getting fogged up so yeah I think that is a very very important rule that you need to to set with whoever you're going you know what we are riding together but no hard feelings if I want to you know take a day off take five days off take a week off and uh, and do a solo ride which is fine it's the way it's supposed to be South Africa has really the most beautiful views and they kind of start from East London down look where Daniel's taking me look uh, is this this is not pretty a few hours later with the Sun now properly warming us we took a detour because one of us saw a sign which read Christmas rock and that just sounded too good to pass I on the other hand decided that my tank bag was the perfect place to store my microphone <laughs> Okay, so I was busy, busy chatting and uh, the microphone was in the back, so I'm sure you heard none of that. Let's try again. What I was saying is that uh, South African explorer man, Daniel, saw a sign on... Uh, look at that, it says, we're, we're right, it says we're in the ocean. We're not in the ocean, but that's what it says. He saw a sign on the main road that said Christmas Beach and he loved the way it sounded. And uh, because he, he's in a very explorey mood today, we're on Christmas Beach. He's putting a bottle of water under his side stand. Let me get my key. I was just saying, Christmas Beach, no? She's a plakut. Because it's no? Christmas Rock. Christmas Rock. We've still got 350 kilometers to do at this rate. We're gonna, we're gonna do it in about four days. Okay. How are you guys doing? Ah, uh, <laughs> brandy and coke. <laughs> hey. What have you got there? Thank you. It's exactly what I needed. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> South African hospitality. Let me eat it. It is very good. Some sort of fish bowl. Like a fried fish bowl. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Okay, we got off the main road again because we saw a sign that says uh, Fish River Lighthouse and we like both lights and houses, so uh, we had to come here. I have no idea how to get inside yet, but uh, we'll make a plan. Alright, apparently it's closed, so no lighthousing today. But just look at this view. Look at this amazing, amazing view. That in front there with the color of the water is different. That's the Fish River. It's a huge river that comes into the ocean, washes into the ocean. But these huge empty beaches are just awe-inspiring.
With the nostalgia out of the way, we got back to what we were very good at, making plans. It is sunny, it is beautiful, it is 27 degrees and uh, I think we almost might have made an actual plan. Nobody knows if we're going to stick to it, but uh, I think we might have. We've got 72 kilometers until Port Elizabeth and we decided because it's almost five o'clock we are going to sleep in Port Elizabeth. But before we get there, about 20 kilometers north of Port Elizabeth is um, a national park with elephants. And who doesn't like a nice big heavy elephant? So before we get to, to Port Elizabeth, we're gonna take a swing by the elephant park and see what's uh, what's happening there. I kept thinking on the road today about uh, those two guys in the in the Bucky. It's called the Bucky in South Africa. It's a truck. The rest of the world, uh, or for the Americas, I don't know <laughs> what everybody else calls it. And I was thinking about them, about how genuinely curious they were about us and what we were doing there and. Where were we from? And we had a very nice chat, giving us, you know, food. And uh, these kind of interactions, unfortunately, I don't have the GoPro on all of the time. That would be impossible. But we've had so many of these interactions since we've gotten here, which just shows that, uh, I mean, this is a fact by now. We've done almost 5,000, 6,000 kilometers through a lot of, um, towns and cities in South Africa, everybody's incredibly friendly, especially if you're on a bike. They're very curious about uh, about you. And I thought the reason for this might be that everyone is a lot more relaxed in South Africa, or at least where we've traveled, than, uh, you know, most Europeans or guys from the US. I mean, these guys were chilling on a, today is a Thursday. They were chilling on a Thursday in their car, on the beach eating uh, fish cakes those are actual fish cakes he said the fish came in uh, it was deep sea fished came in this morning he decided to make some fish cakes it was very tasty spicy but tasty so they were chilling in their car you know having a glass of something eating uh, <laughs> nice fish cakes obviously they're chilled out obviously they're relaxed compared to I don't know, people that I'm usually used to at home. We're not, Romanians are not a very relaxed uh, population. Before we left the beach, they told us to go uh, in the little town. It was literally a little town. It has 10 streets maximum. And they told us to go to uh, their, it's not a city hall, their local watering hall. It's like a pub to uh, have a glass of water to drink before we leave, uh, we leave on the road. And there we found another four people that were, you know, busy relaxing on a Thursday afternoon, which all of them were extremely curious about us and where we're going and where have we been. And again, very, very friendly. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see these, uh, these kind of people and have these interaction with the locals because it's kind of the only thing that gives you the a true idea of what, of what the country is. Actually interacting with the locals, that'll tell you everything about a place. Great Explorer took another uh, shortcut somewhere. There's somebody's house over there. One person or one family living alone next to the beach. Okay, so we've got one family here. There are quite a couple of houses. One, two, three, four, five, living beach life. About an hour later, we stopped at the side of the road to make more plans for the same day. Status update, um, our genius planning abilities have even outdone themselves. We were not able to stick to that plan for even an hour. 
So now we have a new one. We're gonna stay at uh, the Elephant Park. Not inside it, there's a little uh, guest house around there. Should look absolutely amazing. We're not going to Port Elizabeth anymore because um, it's pointless coming to the Elephant Park and just looking at the gate and uh, not actually experiencing it. Daniel and I split up. I am using the civilized app called Waze to take me to our accommodation. And as you can see, I'm on a civilized starred road. He's still using his Google Maps, which has taken him on a gravel road that, if I look at it, takes you right through the Elephant Park. So I don't know how he's going to pull that off. I don't think you're allowed with a bike in an Elephant Park. Maybe he'll get trampled. Who knows? It's going to be a fun, interesting evening. As it turns out, the gatekeeper had no problem letting Daniel enter a natural park full of wild animals on a motorcycle. I asked him what's inside when he opened the gate. Okay. And he told me, is the, the reservation, the wildlife, the wildlife. Oh, okay, so he didn't give you specific. What kind of animal? Are animals inside? Yes. What kind of animals? All of them. Oh, <laughs> like, like lions. Oh, like elephants and so on, yes. Okay, thank you, but not. All right, we are staying in this amazing farm and it doesn't have rooms per se. It's got these domes that uh, the lady says are built out of clay and mud and uh, all earth things, but it is so amazing. Let me show you around. You've got everything you could possibly need. Aircon, Wi-Fi, a very comfy bed, but the most interesting thing is, this is the bathroom. You've got your normal shower, toilet, everything else. If you come around here, outside, there's an outside shower. Look at it. How cool is that? That's just amazing. I'm gonna be doing that now and uh, you're not invited. We ended up staying two nights at Stellenhof guest house. This place was truly amazing. The rooms are very comfortable. We spent every night by the fireplace outside, sampling the local wine selection, making more plans and of course visited the local restaurants in the area. The next day we went on an elephant game drive but that will be on an episode all on its own. All in all, this place really did leave an impression on us and I would recommend it to anyone that passes through and wants a relaxing time. As always, this show would not have been possible without our sponsors. Motorrad Rentals is South Africa's biggest motorcycle rental company. They have a large variety of motorcycles and support vehicles, are very flexible, they will also help you plan your trips according to what you're looking for and have been nothing but great since we got here. If you're looking to tour South Africa on a bike, give them a look, link in the description below. Cardo Systems has kindly provided the Bluetooth intercoms for this entire trip. Their motorcycle lineup is suited for any rider from their top of the range Pack Talk series to their mid range Freecom series and now their budget friendly Spirit series. I have done a comparison video in the past and will link that in the description below. Use code LWH on cardosystems.com for a 15% discount on most of their products. And again, as always, if you have enjoyed this video, then the best way to actually help the channel out and see more of them is to interact with the video. Give it a big like, comment down below, put your thoughts down there. I will read all of them, I will answer them. And of course, the most important, subscribe. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next one.